All right, super excited to walk you through the Swan integration with Spectre. I've been helping to work on this for the last like four months. So we're running the latest Spectre version 1.8.1. This was released uh, just this morning, February 1st. So you get to this new services screen by clicking on choose services on the side tab here. Right now we just have Swan, but other cool stuff is coming hopefully soon. Uh, so we click into Swan. If you aren't already a Swan Bitcoin user, you can uh, join Swan. Or more interesting, we're going to link our existing account. So we're going to click here, sign into our Swan account, authorize Spectre, and this is going to happen in a new browser tab. So I'm going to go ahead and click. This takes me to the usual Swan login screen. And I'm going to go ahead and pause here and sign in. OK, so I've completed the usual Swan login. And now I'm ready to authorize Spectre to connect to Swan. We're going to be able to create connect a wallet from Spectre to Swan. Uh, and we're going to be able to modify the Swan automatic withdrawal plan. So I'm going to go ahead and authorize. So now I'm forced to log back into Spectre. This is because we are essentially sending a Swan integration secret to Spectre. So now we need to securely store that secret to keep your Swan account secure. Uh, so it's your API integration credentials, um, API key, API secret. So Spectre has a encrypted user storage module now that is keyed off of your password when you sign into Spectre. So now my Swan integration data is encrypted on disk based on my user's uh, password. So integration was successful. I can close this browser tab now. And I come back to my main window and I'm looking at the Swan settings screen integrated within Spectre. So first thing to do is configure my auto withdrawal Spectre is going to send 10 unused addresses to Swan. So this is different from how Swan usually works. Normally, you can give Swan one address manually, or you paste in your XPUB, which they then use to generate your deposit addresses. So it's not ideal to give them just the one deposit address because they'll keep sending to it over and over again, and you don't want deposits to pile up on the same address. But you also don't want them to have your XPUB because that means, in theory, they can view all your future transac transactions in that wallet. So now with this integration, we're only going to send 10 addresses to Swan. And the idea is that if your Spectre instance is offline for a while, you want to make sure that Swan has enough available addresses to keep using a fresh one. And then the next time you open Spectre, it will communicate with Swan and say, hey, you're short a couple addresses, let me send you some more. But so at any one point in time, Swan will only have up to 10 of your addresses. Um, and then once they're sent, we pre-label those addresses as reserved for Swan. Um, and then again, Spectre checks them each time you log in and sends more uh, anytime that uh, we're not at the full 10 pending addresses. So I can pick which wallet I want to withdraw to. I have a single key DCA stack wallet, but more interesting, I've got a two of three multi-sig for my super deep cold storage. So another thing Swan couldn't do before was uh, withdraw to your multi-sig wallet, uh, or at least you couldn't give them an XPUB for your multi-sig wallet because that just doesn't exist. So now I can auto stack straight to my cold storage multi-sig, and I want to do that every week. So I'm going to say update. And so now Spectre is going to take 10 of my deep cold storage addresses, send them to Swan, and set it up to be a weekly auto deposit. So I've got my linked wallet. Uh, I've got no Swan deposits yet. But if I click into my wallet now, and I view my addresses list, I can see all these addresses that have been reserved for Swan 
and they're identified with the SWAN logo because we know that they're reserved for that specific service. Uh, and the, the, the logo integration is at a deeper level than just this label. So I can rename this anything I want. Like, you know, I can anticipate this to be like, you know, uh, Tuesday stack. And regardless of what the name is, it's going to retain this association with SWAN so that when they make a deposit, um, it's going to go into you know one of these addresses, um, and I will see it always marked as uh, belonging to the SWAN service. And then, so the SWAN shortcut shows up here. I can just click into it, and eventually I'll start seeing my auto withdrawals pile up here. Uh, I go to settings. I can change my auto withdrawal. And in my individual wallet, I don't have any uh, transactions in here yet. But the same thing, my SWAN deposits will show up uh, in addition to my regular deposits. And again, they'll all be marked with the SWAN icon next to them. Um, also notice that the reserved addresses are interleaved. We're, at, we're reserving every other one so that we don't create large gaps in your wallet. That's also potentially dangerous. Um, uh, some wallet software will not realize that you have a deposit, you know, all the way down here if all the addresses previous to it were unused. So we still have address zero available not as a not reserved deposit address for regular use outside of Swan. So if I go to receive, by default, it's going to look for the first available one, which is address zero. Now let's say I use that and I say get me a new address. It's going to skip the address reserved for SWAN and jump to address number two as my next available address. So address zero, address one is now reserved for SWAN, address two is for something else, uh, and so on. So you can keep using your wallet as usual. You won't even notice that, that these SWAN addresses are interleaved here. Um, and then you'll just see your SWAN deposits appear uh, in your transaction list as they're auto-deposited. And then, of course, if you want to remove the integration, you can just click Remove SWAN Integration. So that's going to clear out your local API secrets. And also, it deactivates the, this auto withdrawal into this wallet on the SWAN side. And we clean up the addresses so that uh, they're no longer reserved for SWAN. So they've been reset. Uh, to their completely unused, unreserved state.